uh, the unemployment rate. And our unemployment rate is high if it gets to be around 10%. Guys, during the Great Depression, our unemployment rate in the United States was 25 to 30% at one point. A quarter of the population had no job. None at all. And that's not counting other people that didn't have enough job to support their family. They're just doing little things here and there so they can kind of have some money. In Europe, it's worse, though. In some countries on Europe, unemployment rates reach 40 and 50 percent. This is a massive worldwide thing that's going on and it's causing, basically, for millions and millions of people to be miserable, to not be able to provide for their families. People are desperate. You have kids your age who decide that they know that mom and dad can't support them anymore and you know what they decide to do? I'm going to hit the road. Little brother and little sister are not going to eat if I don't leave. And so they bolt. They take off though and they in the United States we have this vagrant culture where people are where these kids y'all's age are traveling on railroads camping out beside major highways going and doing these things though because their families can't support them. And you can't send an 8-year-old out to fend for themselves, but you can send a 15-year-old out to fend for themselves. And the families had no choice. It was either that or someone's going to starve. And so you have teenagers out on their own. You have all these different people out on their own. You have people that <clears throat> when the stock market crashed in New York City and Chicago and other major cities, there were people who committed suicide, who jumped from the tops of buildings though because they became so depressed because they had lost all their fortune and they couldn't go on. This is major, major stuff. All right. Now, the bad economy forced many people to lose their jobs and homes, and many people became homeless. And they built makeshift homes with other people. And what, what we see, and I forgot, I think I forgot to put it on this slideshow, is that there are these pictures of outside of places like Chicago, Washington, D.C., New York, Boston, Philadelphia, these major cities, to where you'll just see shacks, little lean-tos, made of old tin and blankets and everything else that have been put up. And they're outside of old factories that used to actually allow people to work there. The factories have closed down. And they built up these huge little towns made out of this makeshift material. And they are called Hoovervilles because of President Herbert Hoover. Herbert Hoover comes in, he's the he doesn't cause the Great Depression. He came in at the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, he, he takes the blame for it. He does. And one of the reasons why he does take the blame, he does deserve a little bit of the blame, but you also have to understand politics at the end of this time. Herbert Hoover's a Republican. And um the Republican Party is a little bit different than it is today, but the Republican Party during this time was still very pro-business. And he thought, guess what? You leave the economy alone. The government shouldn't mess with the economy. It'll manage itself. And that's what he worked through the 20s. Government regulations went off. Things go up. And he thought, same thing's going to happen. And so his philosophy was, you know what? We can't panic. We can't freak out. We've seen other little busts before, but everything will climb back up. Everything will be okay. And so Herbert Hoover does nothing. He sits there and waits while people are starving, while people are doing these things. Because up to that point, traditionally, the economy had bounced back. He can't see in the future and see how bad it's going to be. He can't see that. And by the end of his presidency, he realizes how bad it's going to be. And he starts to sign stuff into law. So sign up another president we know? Obama. No. President Bush, last six months of his uh, of his presidency, he signs in the first act to get, basically give relief to these companies though who have gone into debt and about going to bankruptcy. President Bush is the one that signs into law the the loans that are given to the major banks that are given to GM and Dodge and Ford and all these big motor companies. He's the one who does that, though, and that's not like him. He's a Republican. He doesn't like <laughs> to give government money away, but he realizes, though, that it ha something has to be done or the economy is going to crash even further. Okay? All right. Excellent. Now, actually, I did put it in there. Yeah. All right. But this is a Hooverville. You can see. What kind of emotional toll do you think this would take on a country if every major city had several of these Hoovervilles. If you saw people camped up 
along the road holding up signs that said, we'll work for food. What kind of toll is this going to take on a country's psyche, on their emotions, on their mindset? What do you all think? Morale's going to get low. What? Morale's going to get low. You don't think that anything is going to get better. That if you keep someone down in the mud long enough, people start thinking, you know what? This is the lot in life. This is it. What else you got? Okay, and so the idea is this, um, scary, is that you've got, uh, you've got, this country had been on an economic high, now it's on an economic low, and you see that other people are having to suffer just as much as you are, and it changes your perspective on things. What else? If you grew up as a kid, do you think you're going to be able to spend money when you grow up, even if the economy gets better? Nope. No. <clears throat> I've heard stories, my grandparents were... My grandparents were just barely old enough to be in the Depression. They remember it when they were real young. But you have seen, I've seen people, older people, that I grew up in, in Court Charlotte with, in the community I grew up in, that had lived, been 8, 9, 10, 15 years old during the Great Depression, and they didn't use banks. Their family had lost all their money in a bank. And so they would take their paycheck, cash it, and their savings accounts would be mason jars with money inside them sealed right. shut either buried in the backyard or put inside of a mattress because they didn't trust banks. Also, how do you think voting records are going to go if you have a Republican in the presidency when the Depression starts and when we come out of the Depression we have a Democrat in office? How do you think voting, voting is going to go? You're going to go towards the Democrat. Especially if you have a Democrat like Franklin Delano Roosevelt who's the president. Uh, through most of the Depression. He's the Democratic president, though, who really kind of pulls the country out of the Depression. Three terms. Three terms. Went on four. He was elected for four, but he yeah, died, died before that fourth one. Uh, brain aneurysm, actually. All right. Now, early 1930s. The, that should be Great Plains at the top, though. The Great Plains had a major drought for several years. A major drought for several years. And what had happened here in the Great in the Great Plains was this: as long as there a great drought, but years before that, they had these things that were called hedgerows, and these hedgerows were basically windbreaks that they put in between fields, so the, it was just lines of trees that the wind would hit, and it would keep from scattering dust everywhere. However, before this drought hits in the tw in the late twenties. People, farmers are just booming. Agriculture booming. had several good years in a row. Agriculture was just booming. And people think to themselves, you know what? If I remove that acre of trees, or that, those several acres of trees I have between my field and my neighbor's field, and planted it, I can make even more money. And so they take those rows out, and eventually what happens when you have a drought for several years and the wind picks up, you've got these huge dust storms. Because the topsoil is so dry, no one can plant and hold that soil down that it just blows all the way across. And you have these massive dust storms. And here's one right here. This is an actual picture from the Great Depression. You can see this massive dust storm. And they say you can see it coming from miles off. And if you were caught into it, there was a very there was a chance that you could suffocate just by breathing in all this dust. And if you ever get a chance to listen, they, uh, the National Archives did a great interview series with some of the people who lived through the Dust Bowl. And they interviewed them. And they said you would go to bed and you would lay in bed, and if you didn't want to turn or roll around, because if you did, you could just feel grit, almost like sandpaper. Because you have your windows shut, your doors shut, and everything else, but you know what? Sand finds its way to work into the little cracks and little crevices. They said you couldn't get sand out of your hair. There'd be sand in your teeth. There would be yeah, dirt everywhere. Yeah, you had to sleep with a cloth over your face. You had to do all these different things. Because the Dust Bowl, and that's what it's called, this Dust Bowl is this area that runs from Kansas and Nebraska all the way down into Oklahoma, southern Texas, all the way over a little bit to the west. This huge kind of area where this Dust Bowl is going on, where this dust storms are picking up and everything's going good. Now.